What's up YouTube? Uh, today I'm gonna go over part two of this uh, video. Uh, first one was about uh, how to get started in sports photography uh, with the equipment and this time we're gonna go over how to get um, basically to reach your goal. Um, uh, as far as the goal goes for this video, uh, it's just I have a lot of people asking how do you get to that level of shooting uh, pro events and college level events um, such as uh, NFL, um, NCAA, uh, MLB, NHL, and all that stuff. So if that's your goal, then this video is for you. Um, so I'll just explain my, my story and uh, how I went about it. Uh, everybody has their different ways of going about it. So my way may be completely different from Joe Blow. So. Uh, just keep that in mind because everybody has their own different uh, way they want to go about it. So here's my story. I started out um, by shooting with uh, Canon 7D. First I had, this was about three and a half years ago, or maybe three years ago, around there. I had, before that, I had no interest in photography. Um, I was, a uh, I, I played a uh, uh, this dancing game called In the Groove. Um, used to own the actual uh, full blown arcade machine and would play that game all the time. Uh, one day we had a tournament at um, in my house uh, for the game, and my friend came by with his 5D Mark II, and he was recording video. And I was, uh, you know, intrigued by the video quality. I was like, Wow, that's that's really good. Um, and I asked him what he would recommend me to get to shoot. Uh, video just like that because I at the time it was I wasn't you know doing photography so a 5D Mark II was too expensive when I saw the price and that was when the 5D Mark II was brand new and uh, so he told me uh, go get the 7D uh, it's great for video so I did and I started shooting video of me playing the game uh, and I just started taking pictures with the 7D and the kit lens and you know I honestly don't remember how sports came about. I think I just one day decided I wanted to give it a try. And so this is where I went about it differently. I just, I took a risk and I, I went all in. I bought the 7200 2.8 IS Mark II as my first lens. Um, shot with that the 70. So I right away just invested in a $2,500 lens because I did some research online and um, just saw that, that was a great lens for getting started in sports photography. Um, and in case you guys are wondering is if school is necessary, it's not. There is no need to go to school, especially for sports photography. Maybe with other genres of photography, I'm sure it has its you know its use. But for sports, they do have um, uh, sports photography workshops. Uh, it's called uh, what's it called? Uh, sports Shooter Academy is one. Uh, Peter Reed Miller has his own, and uh, numerous other people, and those are very helpful. I've never been to one. I want to go to one. But check those out. I, I know those will help a lot and give you a lot of uh, connections with people, which is in very, very important. And they give you a lot of uh, experience and knowledge on sports photography. So anyway, um, got the 7200, started shooting sports. And how I first went about it was I went to my one of my local high schools out here in Marietta. And I uh, co first contacted uh, the athletic director through email. I sent an email out to a bunch of athletic directors all across different uh, lo uh, high schools that were local, and uh, he was the one of them was a, at Mesa High School was the first to respond. Uh, I basically sent out an email that said, uh, "My name's uh, Seth Sanchez. I am trying to get into sports photography. Uh, I was contacting you in regards to possibly getting credentials for uh, your games um, and basically covering the games. And in exchange for the uh, field access, uh, I will give you." Uh, the photos for free, um, and I know that's it sounds terrible because it's free. You, you usually don't want to do that. You don't want to give away your work for free, but you know if you're getting started, it, it doesn't hurt to you know exchange something for something you want, and that's totally fine when you're starting out. There's nothing wrong with that. So uh, the Mesa athletic director was the first to reply, and he said, "Yeah, sure, just come on down and go ahead and shoot some football." So I went down there, shot some football, and. I've been, I was doing that for, you know, quite a while and just kept going, shot soccer, uh, water polo, baseball, softball, basketball, and just for that school and built a relationship with the school and they just give you more and more access and 
uh, you know, that's what I first did. So my recommendation for first getting started once you've got a, a baseline of a, like a, ba a basic setup of uh, equipment, uh, go to a local high school. Uh, even if you want to set up a meeting or just talk to them in person, email them, call them, uh, talk to the athletic director and just try to uh, get some access to the sidelines. Um, every school is different. Every school has different um, uh, restrictions. So. Just find the one that's laid back and we'll give you the access. And if they want photos in exchange, sure, just go ahead and do that. Um, so shoot youth sports uh, too. If you have a family or friends that have a kid that's in youth soccer or flag football or something, shoot that. Uh, that's how you get started. And it, it's totally fine to start with, you gotta start with the lower end stuff. Uh, you can't just obviously jump right into uh, college and pro stuff. So uh, you shoot youth sports and high school stuff first. and just keep shooting and get that experience and uh, get the skill that you need uh, to get higher up. And uh, I, to this day, I, sh I still uh, shoot high school. There's, it's it's great. Uh, I shoot for max preps, um, and you know you can get just as good shots at high school level that you can at pro events. Um, doesn't matter what level it's at. There's those those moments are out there. Celebrations. Um, there's emotion in, in all sports at all levels. So shoot high school. Um, and use sports and just keep doing that and build up a portfolio. Uh, getting, as I mentioned in the previous video to this uh, two-part video series, uh, getting the right equipment is very important. Um, so once you get that equipment, learn how to use it, master it, and just know your stuff inside and out. If you don't practice to use the gear, you're not going to get anywhere because you can have all that stuff, but it doesn't do you any good if you don't know how to use it. So once you get it, go out and shoot. Just shoot, 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 shoot. Uh, and if you're trying to figure out, uh, use, or like get some information on something, it's all online. I didn't go to school, and I know plenty of other shooters have not gone to school for this type of thing. We live in 2014. The information is all online now. Uh, it's it's pretty good. Uh, you can get anything you want you need to know it's it's online so once you've built up a, a solid portfolio with high school stuff and you feel like you're ready and you know your you know pretty much everything that your camera does and you've got a solid portfolio uh, you contact a, a wire agency or a media outlet such as a, a AP um, Icon Sports, Cal Sport Media, uh, somebody. Those are the people that cover the college and pro. When you contact them, they're going to ask you what equipment you have, what experience you have, how long you've been shooting, uh, where you're from, and what area you can cover. Um, so be prepared for that. And honestly, just whatever you do, do not contact them unless you know that you've got a solid portfolio. Look at other people's work. Go on their websites and look at their shooter's work and compare them to yours and see what the difference is and learn from it. And it gives you ideas of what to shoot and how to shoot and what position you can put yourself, uh, set, set yourself up for to get a certain angle for a, like a baseball shot or football and just, that's how you learn. Um, that's what I did. And you know, don't be discouraged if the first few times they don't respond to you or if they do and say, sorry, we don't need you. We, we already got enough coverage out there. That happened to me uh, plenty of times. I think well over five or six times before I got uh, hired by CalSport Media. And it, it is very hard to first get your, get your, uh, your foot in the door uh, because it's, it's true, especially it depends where you live too. I live out in uh, the LA area, uh, in San Diego area, like in between. Uh, so I cover both those areas, and they're full. Like, most places are just full of staff, and even the contract shooters. It's just it's such a it's a gold mine for photography. There's so much opportunity here, but there's so many shooters. The competition is very high, so you will probably get declined the first few times. But don't stop contacting them, and don't stop working on your portfolio. Uh, don't let that discourage you. I mean, I'll be honest. I got discouraged when it first happened to me. Uh, and you just, you can't let it put you down. You just have to learn from it and say, okay, I'm going to go out and shoot some more high school stuff and new stuff and get better photos because my stuff is not good enough. Um, just, that's what you need to keep doing. Keep learning, keep researching, keep shooting, and just don't give up. You can't give up in this type of field of uh, photography. Um, 
just photography in general is very competitive, especially with sports. Everybody wants to be on those sidelines for the NFL games. Um, and I myself am still trying to work my way up. My ultimate goal as a sports photographer is to eventually become a staff photographer for Getty Images or uh, AP, uh, maybe Sports Illustrated. And as crazy as that sounds, I don't care what people think. That's my goal. I'm going to get there and I want to push myself to get to that goal. No matter how long it takes, no matter how hard it takes, I've got, I personally feel like I've got the right gear now I'm, and I've got all the gear. The gear is fine, but now I need to uh, use this gear the right way and master it and get the right shots because like I said before, I can have all that gear, but what good is it going to do me if I don't know how to use it properly, if I am not getting those shots that those companies want to see from me. So I'm not saying in any way that I'm a top of the line shooter and just because I have that gear. The gear has its purpose, but if it's used in the wrong hands, it doesn't do you any good. So uh, that topic is completely different. I've gone over that before about if gear matters and that's, there's another video for that, so check that out. But so that's pretty much it. That's how you really want to, if you want to get yourself up to those uh, pro and college level events, get the gear, learn how to use it, shoot high school and use sports like crazy and just get out there and shoot. Uh, heck, even try applying for max preps. Uh, they, the only downer is they don't pay you. It's commission and starting September 1st, 2014, they're gonna change the policy from 80% commission to 100%, so that's good. Um, and don't rely on it for money, but it's you, you can get an income. It all depends where you're from, what area you're, you're living in, how much competition there is and all that, and if the parents uh, wanna even buy the photos, it can be tough, so don't rely on it for money. Uh, just use it to get the credentials. That's another way to get the credentials and just the experience. And uh, you can even get into the uh, championship stuff too for high school stuff. That's what the, they'll let you do if uh, they have an opening when that time comes around. Uh, and you can get those, get in the, those uh, events and shoot them. So just keep shooting high school stuff as much as you can. Get that portfolio, master your gear and learn how to use it. And once you've got that solid portfolio based off what you've seen from other shooters on those websites you want to work for, uh, like Getty Images and stuff, check out the photographer's work and compare it to yours and mold your portfolio into something similar to their work and, you know, create your own style too, as long as it's good. So that's pretty much it. Um, I hope this video helped you guys out. Um, a lot of people are asking me how they can get up there and how to go about it and this is, this is it. Get the gear learn how to use it, shoot like crazy, get that portfolio, present it to that company. If they decline you, just work on your portfolio and keep keep at it, keep contacting them. Show them that you want to work for them. And that's, that's it. Uh, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the video and I'll catch you guys later.